me what's going on youtube is donnie b all day a little frothy just made myself a nice italian sausage grinder so here's the deal i'm bringing you some old school cool today some new school old school cool um this guy right here is the rosecraft blades appalachian jack um let's get into the specs and then we will get into the wall so here we have a uh, blade finish that is satin and you see that it is not a quick deploying knife this is a knife you use while you need to use it this isn't something you're going to take out and defend your life with and i'm going to get the questions does that mean you can't use it for personal protection of course you can it's sharp and pointy um so garlic um the steel one of my favorite blade steels of all time as far as knives are concerned d2 i just love d2 steel um it is a clip point uh, blade length is 3.3 inches the closed length is a very generous 4.4 inches um gotta love that uh the handle color is black it's micarta um it's beautiful actually i'll show you up close um, it is obviously non-looking. Opening says nail nick. Bullshit. Um, and I'll show you why. Um, overall length is 7.7 .7 inches. Um, designed by Andy. Andy Armstrong. So, I wanted to show you a little up close. It's kind of hard to see in this light. But we'll when we get it outside, I'll, I'll try and show you a little better. But the handles are really nice. Really, really nice. Um, so far, between this one and the, um, <clears throat> whatever it's called, I can't remember that orange one. Whew, man, that thing was beautiful. But uh, so far, so good. Now, I think Andy possibly was a designer over, and I'm not 100% sure. I think some somebody told me over at Rough Rider, and that would explain the old school cool because they do a lot of slip joints. Um, so I, I could see where that would fit in. Um, so there's only one thing I don't like about this knife. That's not even a don't like. It's because there's something about the part I don't like that I do like. I know. But first, let's get into the thumb nick. Okay, so it's a slip joint. If you take your thumb and you put it in that little hole and you open it, it works. It really works. You can open it. The problem is if you have like frail na nails or soft nails, this thing is built so well that you will rip your thumbnail right off trying to open this. And that is saying something as far as how really well built it is. The thumb nick, you can use it if you want. Um... I prefer to try and get a little pinch and grab. And that's one thing about these. A lot of times where the thumb nick is, if they did a little just half moon, boop, boop, on each side, giving yourself a place to do a pinch grip in there and pull, or even do like a deeper, almost like grooves on both sides for the thumb nick so you can actually grab a lip, that would make a ton of difference, especially for some people just don't have nails at all. They have no nail to dig in if the knife is closed and let's say it didn't have this nice hump let's say it was almost buried you'd never get it open ever you'd have to get a screwdriver and pry it open um but that just means it's well built if you could stick your thumb and just open it right away that means you got a crappy knife because this one will rip your entire finger off you got a really good knife um i would i would equate the quality of this knife with that of a case and i am a big case guy i love case um, you can't touch them, but I'll tell you what, this thing is really built well. I mean, super, super well. I love the length. The length matters. I, I wish all knife makers thought enough or all knife designers thought enough to put this distance at least minimally inside of their knife designs. Minimally that, that length. It is just beautiful it works even when you're talking about having something this skinny which doesn't work for everyone right because you, you can't you can't really get it but when you're talking about a slip joint the thumb goes on top you don't hold a slip joint like this you don't you hold a slip joint like this you can put your thumb on there you can feel it moving so you can cut that's what it's for when you cut down you keep it like that slip joints always use your thumb on top you're going to find yourself getting much better cuts more consistent cuts 
and you can work the angles better. These are whittling style knives. It's what they were originally done, so you can carve through wood and things like that. Um, awesome. So the part that I don't like, that big screwdriver on the end, I, I don't know why there is a need for a screwdriver on the end when it's something that's in a pocket. So in a pocket, this can end up ripping your inner pocket liner. So if you have a pair of jeans and you got that really thin material, that's your pocket liner. This can end up just digging right through, go right through, make a hole, and there goes your knife. If you don't feel it bounce off your foot, it's gone. Um, not only that, but reaching in to, to get it, you get a nice little corner, and that sucks. And so you're thinking, yeah, so why not just go down and take it to the grinder and take it off? If it was mine, I might. But I'll tell you one thing I wouldn't mind having that for is because it's a clip point, it's got a nice, very long thin tip right and i said it before in the other video the only way you're going to break this tip is if you're using it for something it's not made to be used so if you break this tip it's not because it's weak and it's not because it's bad it's because you clearly didn't know how to use your knife right it's a cutting knife it's, it's a whittling knife the tip is is to be used minimally this it's not a stabbing tip how do you know that because it's a slip joint if you stab with a slip joint it will close right but you can use it on a controlled cut to do like bow hole drilling, things like that to make yourself a little dot, a little hole um, on a nice thin piece of wood. You can go all the way through. It'll take you forever, but you can go all the way through and you can make yourself something for lashing to tie something on to make something, right? So it's actually very convenient to have that tip because you'd say, well, why have a tip if it's, if it's in risk of breaking? because you use the tip right so but if i want to save my tip and let's say i am out and i'm in a survival situation or i just live near the beach somewhere um these are great for opening muscles great for opening muscles if you need to pry a muscle open let's say you're starving you don't have a fire and you would need to eat it right away you're going to eat it raw crack it open do that um <clears throat> if if you have the ability to make a fire and you have a pot because sometimes you have the ability to make a fire, but you don't have the ability to boil water. Let's say you're out all by yourself in the woods and, and somewhere and you get a spot. You can make a fire. That doesn't always mean you're going to have a pot of, for water, right? Fire is the key, but water is also important. And if if you have the ability to use water, then you can stick your muscles in and steam them open. But if you don't, that little guy right there, good. If you are trying to get grubs for fishing, you can take this, boom. Boom punch it into a little piece of wood and pry open the wood. That's what it's good for. So because this is a pocket knife, an outdoorsman's knife, it has an outdoorsman, you know, need. A lot of people are going to say, oh, it's a screwdriver, screwdriver, screwdriver. If you buy this knife for the thought that you might just need a flathead screwdriver all the time, there might be something wrong with you. Either that or you just have a job that uses a lot of flathead screws. Um, but mainly... This would be a really appropriate prior for things like mussels, maybe cracking open crab shells, things like that. Um, so it could it could be useful in, a, in more of a survival situation or a fishing situation. So that's where that comes in. But what we really want to know is how well does it cut? So we're going to test that real quick. Um, first, I want to see. I don't know if Scab has used this one or not. Um, so let's see. Let's see. I don't know if I'm picking anything up. This may just be a used edge or maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I was just missing. Okay, it's pretty sharp. It's pretty sharp. If it's turning your arm into a baby's butt, then that's sharp. Okay, so let's go out and play. Ooh, all right. So now that we're in the sun, hopefully you can see what I see. And uh, it's not too blurry or anything, but look at this textured micarta. It's, it, it's a smooth micarta but textured underneath and it is really really pretty all the pins are really nicely set in this is a really nice knife this is made really freaking well all right so i know that i can't get through an entire can just not because any fault of the knife but because um length the blade is probably the same exact distance through as the can so let's just get a good a good swat at it though 
that's pretty nice that is super super clean let's see now this is a wood knife but because it's a high quality d2 with a good heat treat not really worried about tearing it up cutting the aluminum um, and it's no problem oh crap all right so i thought it was really good high quality d2 until I saw that chip. Oh wait, sorry, the chip was in the can. This this knife is good. This knife is good, man. All right, so let's uh, throw this part away. Keep an eye on the dogs because they're escape artists. And let's go do some more cutting. So basically, it's it's a Whittler's knife, like I said. So there's not going to be a whole lot of you know stabbing, throwing, doing all a lot of the regular stuff. It's more of a cutter, so we just want to cut. And cutting is what we'll do. So now I have to be careful because of the tip. I have to be careful doing like downward throws because enough vibration that way could, could, doesn't mean it will. Um, you see, I don't know if you can see that, but it goes blah, 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 blah. Um, could end up snapping a thin tip. So I'm not gonna do a whole lot of that. I just wanted to do, put it down, see the bite. And it's actually really nice. So let's try a uh, let's try a nice uh, half inch nylon rope push cut. See if it'll just push through. All right. All right. Hey, what are you guys doing? All right. What are you guys doing? Get off of me. Um, so here's the deal. I wasn't able to get a straight through push cut, um, but it is a used edge. So. Um, I would have enjoyed that edge brand new because I think it would have done better. Um, but it definitely didn't give me a good push cut. So what I want to do is I'm going to try a different part of the blade. <clears throat> so it's cutting into the fibers, but not cutting the fibers. Um, it feels really sharp. It's obviously shave sharp, but it's not push cut sharp. Does that mean it can't cut the rope? No, I'm just going to end up doing that and it's fine. So while I'm not getting a good push on it, it's gonna cut no matter what. It's gonna cut. All right, so we already know that we can use it for bow hole drilling. We already know that we've established that. So now what I wanna do is get a good collapsible position on this where I can move my thumb and I just want to push and push. Now remember, you don't wanna push. It is really windy out here. You don't wanna push so hard that you end up closing the knife on you you're pushing just giving it a little bit of tension so if you get the, a knife like this and you say okay well d badge said to push it with my thumb well you're, you might cut your finger off um you want to use that that little spring to know where the where the blade is moving to um and then once you get started on your piece of wood that's when you're it is really windy out here that's when you're releasing the pressure from your thumb so you will not have that problem and let's see, let's do some round cuts. Man, I don't think I'm going to be able to really keep you guys up. I don't think I'm gonna try and just readjust some, some leg distances here and see if that'll work. Uh, it's just windy, man. I was out playing basketball earlier and I, I threw up a three and I, I threw it in the air. I shot the ball and the ball came back at me. So I said, that's probably not good for basketball. All right, so, so, um, man, let's try and go the other way against the, against the wind here. This is rough. So what I want to do is start with one end of the blade and I'm going to go around and use the entire sweep of the blade to get a nice even cut. And you're going to see that it is making like, well, you can't really see because they're flying off, but it's making the prettiest little curls. So if I'm going to angle this, if I needed it for feathering, boom, 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 things like that, I can actually push it into a little pile, not in today's wind, but I'll show you what's coming off of there are these really sweet little curls. Um, now, if I, if I want to keep those curls, then I would just go into a side grip, even though it's a thin knife, and... I would just pull and get all these sweet little curls and I would go, I would take a, a stick, not a, a wide thing like this, and I would go all the way around in a circle 
until the entire stick was a nest looking like that all the way around. And that would be great for feathering. But when it comes down to whittling, this is, this is perfect. So even if you have to make your tent spikes, pit spikes, um, arrows, spears, things like that, um, obviously you'd be using a stick and not something like this, but you can see how really well this knife is getting through this wood. And it's, it's pretty good wood. It's solid. Um, and, uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty impressed overall just with the knife angles. Look at that. With the knife angles that you're getting, you're going to say, oh, what that, maybe that hole wasn't there. You didn't really just chop that. Okay. Well, here we go. I'm chopping with with a uh, with a, a, an old timer style knife imagine that chopping with a slip joint um but yeah it's it, it's gonna be the for what it is knife if you are into slip joints then this is going to be the kind of knife you will enjoy having because it's a really nice slip joint let's see plastic netting the death dealer for a lot of knives uh, let's see here and I it's I'm not holding it enough but there we go nice clean cut across the plastic that is really really nice hard to do on this stuff let's see if we can't completely have it and of course we can um, I don't know so far I'm thinking for this style knife uh, I, I like it I actually do look at this man it's just it's just a cutter. These things, these things are just all day cut stuff knives. You know what I mean? It's just, it's not my throwing knife. It's a great, great tackle box knife. Um, it's just, it's just good to have. You know what I mean? And you know, the less moving parts you have on a knife, the uh, less chances you have on breaking your knife or destroying your knife. So without locking mechanisms it's just two parts really right it's pretty simple we're gonna have to call this one man it is really windy um but it, it's it's really really nice the chances of you breaking this knife would literally only and i mean only come down to poor usage it would this knife will last you forever if you take care of it forever literally this knife will last as long as you allow it to um it's pretty sweet it is pretty sweet i like this this is a really good one nice job uh andy i think it was nice job on this good knife that's it for this one we're calling it because my ass is gonna blow away i am donnie b all day until next knife